Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. The thing about having a niece and nephew, you've always got an opportunity to make something for them. And with the weather getting nice and summer holidays just around the corner, I thought I'd make a mud kitchen. The frame for it I'm going to make out of these 3x2s, mainly because they're readily available and cheap, so I'm just ripping them down to make them square. The little off cut I'm going to use later on in the project. So with the bits cut square, I can get them all cut to the length on the miter saw. Then I can lay them out in the position they need to be put together. So it's kind of chair shaped, with a long bit at the back, a small bit at the front, and then a couple of cross braces that the full 2x3 material not ripped down. I'm going to get this all glued and screwed together. So first I drill some pilot holes. The drill bit I use cuts a little countersink that later I can plug. This is a little cheap set I just got from Screwfix and what it allowed me to do is plug all these holes so no screws will be visible. I'm using green decking screws but as you're plugging them you don't really need to. I want the kitchen to have a handrail to put a towel on so with a forcing bit I'm just drilling down about a centimetre on each of the legs. This is just going to let a dowel fit in. Well it's not a dowel, it's a broom handle because broom handles are much cheaper than actually buying dowels. The bottom shelf I'm just going to offset from the ground by the thickness of a 3x2 and then that can get screwed in place. So with the two ends together and then the long bracing bits put in I can now get the dowel put in and then the other end can go on trapping the dowel in place. See the basic structure of it is pretty simple. Two chair shaped pieces a stretcher at the top, a stretcher down the bottom and there's going to be another one at the bottom on the other side. Then I can get it all held in place with some clamps while I get it screwed in. So where I had those off cuts where I squared up the wood earlier, I'm going to cut them all down to the same length and these are going to be some slats for the bottom shelf. I use this countersink drill bit again to drill holes in both ends of every piece and then I can start getting them attached to the bottom shelf. I start by getting the centre one in place and then I just use another scrap of 3x2 as a spacer and work my way out from either side. I went to my local wood reclamation yard and got some of these treated slats. I guess they're off cuts from a fencing company so they were really cheap to get a bundle. I square one end up on the table saw, then I can cut them all to the length of the kitchen. I'm going to use them for, let's call it a splashback and a countertop. So I put the countertop one in place just to get the spacing right, and then the splashback ones can go on with some glue and some brad nails. So I mentioned this countersink and plug cutting set. So I've been using the countersink. Now it's time to use the other bit and that's the plug cutter. So I set the drill press up. Then in just one of the little off cuts I can start cutting some plugs. This is a new tool for me and it's really quite satisfying cutting them all out. With the holes cut just get a little screwdriver in and you pry the plugs out. Really easy. Now I can get all these holes plugged. So just get a bit of glue in each hole, then the plug goes in and just gets tapped in place with the mallet. The plugs sit a bit proud, but I can come back and sort that out later. Now with those other slats I prepared earlier, I can get them glued up into one panel to work as the countertop. I want to get glued together and not just nailed on like the splash bag, because I want it to be stronger and I need to be able to cut a hole in it for the sink to go in. With it all clamped up, I push it to one side and then I can sand the kitchen down, sanding all those plugs flush. When I've got everything sanded nice and smooth, I take it outside and I start painting it. I give it a couple of coats with a sage green garden paint so it can happily stay outside. I need to cut out a hole for the sink, so I use my sophisticated stick with two holes in technique to draw a circle. I 
can then drill a hole through the circle, get the jigsaw out and get this hole cut out. I've got a metal bowl that's just going to slip in this hole and act as the sink. The hole needs a bit of a clean up and that's where this drum sander for the drill comes in really handy. It's very messy but does quite a good job. I want the kitchen to have a shelf up above as well as the one down below. So I've got these bits of 6x2 left over from the workshop build and I'm just going to cut out some shelf brackets. I give the curves a bit of a sand down on the bobbin sander and then I can start getting the shelf put together. So I've got another one of these treated slats that I'm just going to get glued onto the brackets. So I've got a kitchen with a sink, but it really needs a hob as well. So with my largest hole saw, I cut out four discs, and then I cut out four smaller ones to act as the knobs. The hole saw leaves a hole in the center, so on the four bigger ones, I fill those holes. It's not so important on the small ones because screws are going to go through. Then I can get them all painted black. This is some chalkboard paint I had left over. I position them how I want on the worktop and then I can get some glue on and get them put in place. Use my faithful bit of railway line just to hold them in place while the glue dries and then I can get some decking oil on as a finish. I leave the oil overnight to dry and then I can get the countertop installed. I didn't show it but I actually put some construction adhesive underneath this and then I got a few brad nails just to help hold it in place until it went off. I position the shelf above the stove and sink, get it clamped in the position I want and then I can drive some screws through the back into it to secure it. The knobs for the stove can then get screwed on the front. I'm using some pocket hole screws as they've got some nice pan head tops to them. And this is why I didn't fill the holes in these as I can get the screws through those. I drop the sink in place and then I can add some other accessories. I mark out the position for four hooks along the back. I can then get four brass hooks tightened into place. The last job is to stick some utensils on and that's it all done. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons and please subscribe for more videos.